often we still use uh, swell index and fluid loss in, in this product evaluation process. And what we've, what we've learned is that swell index isn't a good indicator. It's a great indicator for just plain bentonite and DI water that it's going to perform as a hydraulic barrier. It's not such a great indicator when it comes to running a swell test with the brine or the liquor or the leachate with a polymer uh, amended bentonite. Don't, so, but it's still kind of in the decision-making process. We don't have other tools yet. We're working on building these tools within ASTM, uh, and it's, a, it's an evolving practice. So if the, if the swell numbers come back or the fluid loss numbers come back and they're not traditional historic numbers that we're used to seeing from uh, what's specified in uh, GRI GCL3, which is an industry standard, or ASTM D5889, don't get alarmed by that. They're, it's, they're different mechanisms. It's still a good indicator. It helps in some decision-making process because what starts to come after this, we start talking about moving into this long-term two to nine month to a year and a half long permeability tests. You got to make the right choice then and there to demonstrate equivalency. So you have to, there's, you have to have some tools to make those decisions with. Now, I alluded to when we set up these long-term tests, we talk about how do these specimens get hydrated. We know very well from the literature, in a slide we saw early on in this presentation, that a, a bentonite's going to pick up moisture from the subgrade soil, right? It's going to change from that granular dry structure into a gel. Well, the, the bentonite polymer composite does the same thing. It's going to pick up moisture during construction underneath that liner. It's going to form a gel, and then it's going to get exposed to a leachate at some point through a hole in a lining system. It's possible to prehydrate the GCL underneath the ASTM method with water in the laboratory. It is not a conservative practice. Eventually, you will get an ion exchange that occurs and push through. The conservative approach when you're setting up these programs is to just go ahead and expose the product with the leachate that it's going to encounter. And I'll show you a, a data series here in a minute about how these products can behave uh, when they encounter and encounter the leachate right off the beginning. And then, uh, but with time, you'll, you'll see things happen and be able to arrive at a, at a, a proper solution.